All right, here's your telephone coming in. And the metallic sheath of the communication cable must be either grounded or interrupted as close as practicable to the practical, practicable, to the point of entrance. Now, I'm going to get into some other rules, but let me just establish something. What we're looking to do is we're looking to bond the communication system over to the electrical system, and the electrical system is grounded. So once we get into the next slides, the key is we're going to be focusing on this bonding conductor because, see, Starting in the 2005 code, an inner system bonding terminal is required. Now, you had millions of buildings that were built before the inner system bonding terminal, 25094. And whenever you had to make connections there, you had to like try to find an electrode or a grounding electroconductor. You had to go that direction. But now that we have an inner system bonding terminal, when we're bonding communication systems, we're using bonding conductors. Remember those guys in 800? We're all excited. They told you the note in the very first beginning. Don't forget, we call it now a bonding conductor. So for brand new installations and brand new buildings, you have an inner system bonding terminal. You will be running a bonding conductor, and then there's going to be requirements. Now, here's what I'm going to try to do. As I go through the next few slides, I'm going to skip any time the use of the term grounding electroconductor. I'm just going to use the word bonding conductor, bonding, 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 because I'm talking about going ultimately to the inner system bonding terminal. And then I'm going to pick up the grounding electroconductor, and that only applies where you have a, an existing building and there is no inner system bonding terminal. So I'm just trying to set you all up. You ready for this? All right, here we go. Bonding methods. I'm not going to talk about grounding methods. Bonding methods. Bonding conductors must be insulated. I'm sorry, must be listed. They, don't, they can be insulated, covered, or bare. So the key here is bonding conductors are insulated. Bonding conductors are copper. Bonding conductors are not smaller than 14. Right here, this bonding conductor. It's copper, not smaller than 14, and it can be insulated or bare. No color required. The rule is, in one or two family dwellings, this bonding conductor to the inner system bonding terminal can't be longer than 20 feet. Why is that? Why do they want to limit the length of the bonding conductor? Well, because remember we talked about you get the telephone grounded in the earth at one location at the utility and the cable grounded at one location, the building grounded at one location. They have a lightning event. You have the voltage gradient, and all of a sudden it results in a difference of potential. So what do we want to do? We want to bring them all to the same potential. How do you do that? Bond them together. Well, if you take a conductor and you go longer and longer and longer between the two of them, as much as you're trying to bring it back to the same potential, because a high-frequency event, it causes a, the potential. Yes, it brings the potential down between the two, but it will never get it to zero. And what we're trying to do is protect the equipment once you get in. We don't want to have 10,000 volts between the building ground and the telephone ground, so we try to get them together. So the insurance company pushed this a few code cycles in the past is, listen, let's make sure this grounding, this bonding conductor is not more than 20 feet because... And if it is more than 20 feet, the rule is I want you then to drive a ground rod for the communications. Now you have what? Now we have a grounding electrode conductor. <laughs> Remember that the term they got excited in the beginning? Well, now there's a grounding electrode conductor if you go more than 20 feet. Now you have to bond electrodes together. 25058, when you have more than one system in the building, guess what you have to do? Bond them together. Keep them six feet apart. So now let's go back to our graphic. We're trying to reduce the difference of potential between the systems. So the code says in one or two family dwellings, they couldn't get this passed for commercial. You need to have it no more than 20 feet. Now, exception. If you're over 20 feet, well, you know, what are you going to do? Sometimes you have to go over 20 feet. Then drive a separate ground rod and bond that, those electrodes together. Let's now go over to the rule. I told you about the grounding electric conductor the material, the length, the size, whether it's insulated or not. Now let's talk about what are we supposed to do here? 800.100B1 says, the bonding conductor for communication systems must terminate to the inner system bonding terminal. That's how you take care of your telephone. You're done. It is easy as can be. Note, now this is a note that was added about the inner system bonding termination. Well, that note is talking about the definition 100. And what is an inner system bonding termination? A device that provides a means to connect bonding conductors for communication systems to the grounding electrode system. So if we had this right here, this is my telephone, bringing it right there, that brings a telephone to the electrical system and then all these systems are bonded together. That's just a note. 
reminding us about Article 100 definition of intersystem bonding termination. Okay, what do you do if you don't have an intersystem bonding terminal, an existing? Well, now you got to take your communications conductor, and you'll notice that we did not make it green anymore. Now it's black. It doesn't have to be insulated, but we happen to make it black. You have to now run it to where? One of the electrodes of the grounding electrode system. Now this conductor is not called a bonding conductor. It's now called a grounding electrode conductor. I mean, it makes sense. So that's why <laughs> they made the change in, in 800-100, and they made that note about the change that they made about the term. It used to be called the grounding conductor. Well, grounding conductor was used for everything. Well, it's not a grounding conductor. Intersystem bonding, it's a bonding conductor. Just time together, you're done. If you can't time together because there's no intersystem bonding, well, then go to the building grounding electrode system, grounding electrode conductor, something that can get them. I mean, so we we'll run, we'll run now a grounding electrode conductor. Here's just an example. Well, there's no intersystem bonding terminal. This is an existing installation in the photo. You can see what? We simply run over to the building, to the service raceway. And let's see if that's one of our options. The grounding electrode system, interior metal water piping within five feet of entry, accessible bonding means, non-flexible metal service raceway, number four. That's what that graphic is right there. So that's one way to do it. All right, 800.100D talks about that when you drive a ground rod for a communication system for 800, then you're going to have to bond them together with a six-gauge wire. So if you drive a ground rod, and that's what happens. When your grounding, your bonding conductor is more than 20 feet, you have no choice, drive a ground rod. The length of the ground rod is no less than 5 feet. Doesn't make any sense why, but there's a history for that. I'm not going to get into it right now. Then you bond them together with a 6-gauge wire. Best thing is to try to get that as close as you can to the AC service so that you can limit the length of that bonding conductor to that intersystem bonding terminal. What are we trying to do here? 800-100-D has a note, and it says that you're trying to bring all your systems to the intersystem bonding terminal so you can reduce the difference of potential between the systems. And I think we talked about that back in 800, I'm sorry, 